All right, welcome to the uh, Demon of the Week series. Um, this is going to be a little bit different this week, but to begin with, let's do the intro. Welcome to my channel. You are entering the world of magic and mysticism with your host, Lee W. Johnson. Keep the lights on and help improve the channel by becoming a supporter for just $2.99 per month. Hit the join button. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do this week, because it's the last week of this month, so I want to start a new series of the demons um, from next month. So what I want to do today, because we've covered all 72 spirits of the um, Ars Goetia, um, I just want to talk about a couple things within there, um, specifically about correspondences and the word Goetia itself. Um, so let's actually start with that. So um, the word Goetia, as we pronounce it in, as such, in, in such a manner, is actually the American pronunciation of the word. And I do prefer to use it when I'm referring to the Ars Goetia itself, the 72 spirits within there. I do like to use that pronunciation of Goetia to um, kind of separate it from the broader aspect of what the, the Goetia or the Goetia actually is. So, Goetia um, is actually a Greek word. So, where the, the word actually comes from. Um, and what I'll do, I'll put, if I remember, I'll put um, the Greek and the English transliter transliteration of the word up here. So, it's, it's, it's pronounced Goetia. And that actually means witchcraft or sorcery. And the practitioners of Goetia were the Goe. And I'll put that up there as well. Now, this is this was a form of um, magic in, uh, in in Greece itself, ancient Greece. So this goes like way back, um, you know, long, long like centuries, millennia before um, the the grimoires were actually even written or conceived. Um, this is an old form of witchcraft or sorcery. And although it has come to kind of um, be defined as a form of magic working or sorcery, which is often considered to be low magic compared to theurgy, which was then for therefore the high magic, um, it's if we actually start looking back at it, and what I one person I do recommend that you do get hold of and read is the books by Jake Stratton Kent. Um, he was absolutely fantastic. Um, and I just want to read something from uh, Gia Sophia. This is uh, volume one. Uh, let's see. Uh, Celestial deities are invoked in daylight in a state of purity and cleanliness often wearing white. The occasion is joyful, the altar is raised up, and the sacrificial victim looks towards the heavens at the moment of sacrifice. The dead, on the other hand, were honoured with lamentations from the Greek word for which the term goetia was its, has its origin. These ceremonies were generally nocturnal, as were the Hittite equivalents. The garments of the mourners were torn and defiled with dirt, their hair hung loose and in the in in the disarray. No altar was erected for the dead, rather a pit was dug into which the sacrificial beast uh, looked down, etc, etc, etc. So, although it's come to kind of um, refer to witchcraft and sorcery on a broad basis, if we actually look at more original sources, uh, what we find is that Goetia was actually a necromantic art. Um, and the the spirits that were communicated with were the recently dead, um, but it has extended further now, and we we contact various other spirits, such as the spirits that we find in the grimoires, the demons, uh, or the daemon or the daimon, etc., etc. Um, but this, you know, this is going back to its roots. Is it was very much a necromantic art and 
um, was specifically uh, working with the recently dead. And actually one thing that, that I held on to for many, many years was the idea that the word Goetia or Goetia um, actually meant howling and it it was considered, you know, back in the day, um, it was considered that this was the noise that the spirits made in the desert. Um, oh, it, it, it then got changed to, it wasn't spirits, but it was the, the, the insects and the animals that made this howling noise in the desert. And I held on to that for a very long time because that's what I knew. Um, and then anybody came along and just, you know, kind of presented a different idea. <laughs> I didn't like that. Um, but I have come to understand it differently now. Um, it doesn't necessarily or actually mean howling. It means wailing or lamenting, uh, which is what you do for the dead when they die. Um, you wail and you lament for them. Um, so this again reinforces that idea of it being a necromantic art a, a, uh, from Greece, from ancient Greece. Um, so just something to bear in mind um, when you are referring to the Goetia or the Goetia, however you would like, prefer to pronounce it. As I said, I, I like to just pronounce it Goetia for specifically for those spirits within the Ars Goetia. Um, and then as on the broader basis for, for the, the ancient Greek um, form of witchcraft or sorcery, it's Goetia. Okay. Now, the other thing I want, did want to mention, um, because this came up in questions quite a lot, were the um, uh, correspondences. So this is where, sorry, let me just put stuff, move stuff around. This is where the um, ranks, you know, the, the, the kings, the dukes, the prelaces, um, etc., etc., actually come in handy. Um, I don't like to rank them in this hierarchy of this one's more powerful because it's a king. That doesn't doesn't fit with me at all. Um, so what we find is with the ranks, it, it refers to the um, uh, the planetary aspects, uh, which then have their own correspondences. So if we're looking at the the rank, the planet, and the metal. We've got the kings, which are um, sun and gold. Marquis are, are moon, lunar, and silver. Dukes are Venus and copper. Prelacies are Jupiter and tin. Knights are Saturn and lead. Presidents, Mercury, metal Mercury. The, and the earls are Venus and lunar or moon. Um, so copper and silver. Now you'll notice there's no Mars. Mars is related to iron. Which brings up the question again of if the the um, spirits within the Asgoesha are jinn, um, are they allergic to iron? Because iron is not included in this grimoire, um, Mars or iron. Which just brings up an interesting question again. All right, so when we relate those to the different um, incenses, um, I forgot to write these down, so I'm going to have to kind of skip through my book here and pick them out. Okay, so sun, you would be looking at frankincense. Um, let's just see, lunar. Lunar, moon would be jasmine. Um, dukes are Venus. Sure, I saw Venus just now. Venus is sandalwood. Jupiter. Uh, would be a cedar. Um, Saturn. Let me find Saturn. It's got to be here somewhere. No, gonna have to go further in. Sorry. Please hold. Uh, maybe I'll just edit this bit out. There's Mercury. Uh, Mercury, Mercury, Venus, Saturn, and I don't know why, because it was only one of them. And Saturn. Saturn is myrrh, 
and Mercury, Mercury is Storax, uh, which leaves us with the Earls, which is Venus and Luna, Copper and Silver, and therefore you can relate um, either what what the incense was for Venus and, and Luna, or what some people have done is used Dragon's Blood um, in reference to that. Um, then there is also the um, Deccans. So in astrology we have the Deccans. So it, it get each it gets split up into degrees. Okay, and there are three Deccans: there's the Ascendant, the Succedant, and the Cadent, uh, which are one to ten degrees, ten to twenty degrees, and twenty to thirty degrees within um, a an astrological zodiac. So that's why when I was reading the correspondence for the zodiac, we had, uh, for instance, Berith, I've got open here, was when one to ten degrees Capricorn, etc., etc., etc. And this, because of 72 spirits, when we um, split the degrees up into the ascendant, succedent, and cadent, um, we then get 36 in a complete cycle. So there's actually two cycles in the Goetia. And the one is the, um, the Deccans by day, the second is the Deccans by night. So you start with ba Baal, which is the first one, and you go through all of them until you get to number 37, uh, which would have been, uh, I've got them numbered all wrong here, 37 would have been 74, is it half us? Just check. Uh, it would have been Phoenix, and uh, that starts the new cycle. So Phoenix uh, was the dates are March twenty first to thirtieth, and zodiac is zero to ten degrees, which it would have been, which would then be the same as Baal, uh, March twenty one to March thirtieth. Um, yeah, zodiac, uh, zero to ten, de ten degrees, Aries, yes, there we go, okay, cool, so those all match up, so as I said, you've got the, the all the 72 spirits go through two cycles, um, the first 36 are the Deccans by day, the second 36 are the Deccans by night, um, so this, this comes specifically from Crowley's um, works, if you read, there's there's two uh, versions of the the Ars Goetia, um, one by by Mathers, uh, which is the the Goetia itself that goes through the spirits and it gives their sit their seals and etc etc um, and the actual rituals and the tools used and whatnot. If you actually read the the same version that Crowley edited, um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of extra information at the end, uh, which includes the the decans and such things. So you might want to try and get hold of that version. Um, I will say when it come came to Decarabia, um, in Crowley's version, I don't know if it's just because of the version I had, but uh, the seal was missing and the name was Decarbia. Um, I did did go and check in the Mathers version and the seals there, and the name is Decarabia. So, I'm not quite sure where things went wrong there, but anyway. All right, um, I think that was it. We have the Deccans. We have the uh, oh, obvious uh, the the tarot. Um, you'll also find that goes through a cycle. Let me just start it off for you. So, starting with Baal and moving through. We've got the two of wands, uh, three of wands, four of wands. Then what happens is it goes to five of pentacles. So four, five, but changing from wands to pentacles, from wands to pentacles. Um, six of pentacles and then seven of pentacles. And then it's the eight of swords, nine of swords, ten of swords. Then uh, twenty of cup. sorry, two of cups. So it goes back, so it's ten of swords, and then when it reaches ten it goes back to two, but it changes to the cups then, um, and then goes three of cups, and then four of cups. You'll notice a pattern happening here. And then it goes back to ones, but continues with the number, five of ones, six of ones, seven of ones. 
um, and then it goes back to will we'll go back to pentacles so eight of pentacles nine of pentacles ten of pentacles so I think you can see the pattern that, that goes through there and this all relates back to Crowley's um, Liber 777 so if you want to go check that out and the correspondences that are written in there it's also very helpful um, so yeah I just wanted to note all of those things because while I was doing Demon of the Week and doing the correspondences a lot of people had a few questions about the Zodiac about the the um, tarot references um, and also about the rank I don't like using the rank because it it does give that idea that there's a there's a hierarchy of power and that's not the case at all in my my opinion but the rank does relate to the planetary aspect which then relates to the, um, the the metal and the incense used okay so when you're doing an invocation you can use those um, specific uh, incenses and the metal uh, in your invocation um, which then relate to the actual rank of the spirit that you are uh, invoking um, but each one then also has a variety of different correspondences, which when there were other correspondences, I would have mentioned it in there, um, that you can use specifically for that spirit, uh, that people have found useful when working with that spirit. So all those correspondences are mentioned in each of the videos. All right. So next week, um, it was I was it was actually mentioned in one of the comments, um, I don't think I've replied to it yet, that I should actually talk about the four kings. Um, what I want to do with that, I want to do a Monday musings on that, because we can have a look at the four kings in the Lame um, the, the Lame Lamegaton, you know, the Ars Goetia, um, and different versions have different names for those kings. Uh, we can have a look at those in relation to the four elemental kings of... Um, uh, modern demonolatry. We can also have a look at them in reference to um, the um, sacred magic of Abermelon. Uh, I'll go through the other grimoires as well and just see if there's any references to four four elemental kings of or four kings of the directions. Um, but we can also have a look at them in reference to the um, elemental kings that are, are referred to. Uh, by Paracelsus, and which we then find in uh, Golden Dawn and, and, and such uh, orders. Um, sorry, I was thinking I just touched my mic, excuse me. Um, which are, are, are then uh, Peralda, Jin, um, Nixa, and Gobe, uh, which are the, the kings of the elements, but also the elemental beings of sylphs, salamanders, undines, and gnomes. Okay. So we can have a look at all of that in reference to each other and see if we can pull out any similarities or things like that. Okay, so I'll do that on the Monday Musings. But what I'm going to do from next month is just continue with Demon of the Week. So I'll, I'm going to start with the the nine uh, divine divinity or, or nine demonic divinities uh, from modern demonolatry, Crowley, um, Crowley's, Connolly's work. Um, we have done some of them. Um, I did speak about Lucifer in a, a different video, which wasn't part of Demon of the Week, so I'll include Lucifer and have a look at some other aspects on, regarding Lucifer. Uh, we did do Flerius, that was in under the Horrors um, Demon of the Week video. We have not done Leviathan, so I'll do Leviathan. Uh, we did speak about Belial in Demon of the Week. Um, and then there is uh, Varine. Uh, who I'll do. We spoke about Amducius, um, the Urinimus I'll do, and um, I'm forgetting names now. Begins with the Uncia. There we go, Uncia. And then from there, then I'll go on to others uh, Lilith, Samael, etc., etc., etc. There are thousands upon thousands, so we could keep this Demon of the Week series going forever, actually. Um, and we'll have a look at some Sumerian, Mesopotamian, Babylonian, um, possibly even Egyptian, Greek um, deities that we could consider to be uh, daimonic or daemonic. Um, anyway, 
not ramble. So I'll see you next week with more of Demon of the Week. I hope this made sense. Cheers for now. Bye-bye.